This is a story about a mother who exploited her daughter on TikTok by faking her kidnapping and abuse so that she could become internet famous and get some good money out of it. Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's Ivan Steph and you guys, damn, I haven't said that for a long time. My upload schedule has been straight garbage, but I came across this one TikTok account with rumors of a girl being kidnapped and you already know I had to make a video about it. Today we're going to be talking about this TikTok account named Beepop and Bebe who are a mother and daughter duo that make cosplay videos, often lip syncing and dancing to popular songs. And at a first glance, nothing seems too off. I'm just a little bit caught in the middle but then... Nah, nah, I'm kidding. But for real though, whether or not the rumors which we will be discussing are true or not, this account raises some serious red flags. And not just this account, but many child TikTokers and YouTubers have some pretty dark stuff going on behind the scenes. We all remember the good old days when Lil Tay, the youngest fluxer of the century, was around, and we all found out that it was her brother who forced her to make these videos. Oh, wait. Go back. Go back and say, like, no, you, you, you broke, broke. Then she went completely ghost, only to return a few years later when her brother faked her being abused by her father and ran a GoFundMe scam, which I did make a video about exposing him for it. And since then, they disappeared yet again. And we got the case of Piper Raquel's mom, where back in January, the parents of 11 kids, part of Piper Raquel's old squad, sued her mom, Tiffany, and Tiffany's boyfriend for a long list of things, including physical, emotional, verbal, and S abuse, as well as financial exploitation. When you read into specifics, of the article, it gets pretty nasty. And just recently, a trial date was set for April 17, 2023. Honestly, these exploited social media children are gonna grow up with a terrible fear of cameras, just like little Albert was with white rats. Now, for those who have never taken a psychology class and don't know who little Albert is, basically it was an experiment where they made this baby Albert scared of a white rat, which ended up spreading into a fear of almost everything that is white. Now, where I'm going with this is that if these exploited children thought one camera was scary enough, Apple said a big fuck you and not only made one more, but two more cameras on their iPhone 12 Pro Max. If these children grow up one day to have camera phobia or whatever you would call it, seriously, this they are in for an absolute ride. So Lil Tay and Piper Raquel are only two examples of the countless children on TikTok and YouTube who are exploited for views and have frightening things going on behind the scenes, but Beepop and Bebe are no different. In the last one to two months, Beepop and Bebe have more than double their followers for one reason and one reason only because people think they, more specifically the child, Beepop, are in danger. When I look at their TikToks, the first thing that catches my eye is the heavy amount of highlighter they use on their nose. Honestly, the mom looks like she's attempting to be Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, except if he lives in a desert instead of the North Pole, and except if instead of giving children presents, he exploited them. Okay, but jokes aside, they posted some seriously questionable content. For example, take a look at this TikTok here. At first, it might appear normal, just a girl dressed up in a police Halloween costume. But the the thing is, she's wearing a choker, which gives the costume an entire new meaning. Now for a mother or whoever choreographed that video to sexualize a child for views, it's just wrong. They also made another video which offended a lot of East Asians. Take a look. I do for you, long better. <laughs> All right, fine, I'll have long nails, thanks. It's okay, honey, only $4 more, that's okay. Honey, do you like crypto gel for your nail? It's the best thing you can have for your nail. Make look nice, it sparkle like diamond in the sky. Do you like crypto gel? I mean, come on, just look at the hair, the outfit, the over-exaggerated facial expressions. This type of content is controversial and it is best not to force your daughter to make these types of videos and stay away from this sort of stuff because it can lead to some negative consequences in the future. And this wasn't the only video. Here's another one. I was just a girl from the hood, I was doing all right. Then this girl ran up and said she wanted to fight had to turn around and ask if she's all right because clearly she don't know. wearing that wig is one thing but when you accompany it with the audio that they use just like why as you can see from the comments a lot of people were not happy with this and just put the variable out there that they didn't originally know this was offensive and they had good intentions by making this video it doesn't matter because they kept the video up despite the backlash they got in the comments. And they kept them up because they know it will stir up the pot and at the end of the day, negative attention still is attention and this is how the mother makes her money. So one of the first things you notice when you click on literally any of their TikToks are comments like wear red or green if you are being kidnapped or trapped in your next video. If they are in danger, they should dress in black. Wear purple in your next video if you need help. The comment section of every single of their TikToks are spam with things like this. And what do you know if you look at their next video, they are wearing one of the colors that someone commented. Oh no, Inspector Gadget solved the case. Somebody please call Paw Patrol because they are in danger. You know, it doesn't take a genius to know that when literally every single color in 
the rainbow and beyond is commented, they are bound to wear one of them. At this point, people in the comments are asking them to wear completely nothing and post actual child pee to prove that they are not kidnapped. And it doesn't help that these comments contradict themselves. For example, this comment says wear blue if you're safe, but this comment on the same video says wear blue if you're kidnapped. On another video, blue is okay, but blue also means in danger of death. And the issue is a lot of people, mainly children, ignore the contradicting comments and prioritize the ones that confirm their belief. It's called confirmation bias, which is essentially the tendency to accept information that supports your beliefs while dismissing information that contradicts it. For example, one comment on a video says, if you are in danger, dress as a minion. And what do you know, their next video is a minions video. Wow, isn't that all the proof that we need? Well, no, 10 seconds of looking at timestamps will tell you this. That's because that comment was made after the minions video was already posted because people are trying to fuel up this thing and get the attention they ever so desire. And just take a second to think about the concept of wearing a color to show that you're in danger. Number one, why would this apparent kidnapper give them access to a phone? That has access to social media. And number two, if they can read the comments and reply to them, why wouldn't they just reply to someone and say, help? I am in danger, this is my address, or I mean better yet, they can just call the police themselves. Don't get me wrong, I can understand eight year olds falling for this, but teenagers and even sometimes adults, it's pathetic. People watch just two episodes of Law & Order and now think they're a certified detective. People have been doing some digging looking for any clues that prove Bebop is kidnapped. And they found one video that I want y'all to check out because it is absolutely terrifying. They need our help. Oh my god. Oh my god. Did y'all see the hidden message? It is so crazy that people don't see the name of the TED Talk account. Take a look and you'll see that it says beepopandbebe.spam. So it is clearly not real. Oh, but it's actually their second account. No, no it's not. And even if it was real, just think about it for a sec. Why would they use a second account with less followers to alert people that they are actually in danger and need of help. Like why wouldn't they use their main account where they could reach out to more people? And more importantly, like this should be kind of an obvious, why would their kidnapper give them access to TikTok and let them post these videos alerting people? And it takes just five seconds to search up Beepop and Bebe's account and read their bio where it clearly says only account. This happens way too often. And I don't know if y'all heard of George Mason, how he tricked the internet into thinking he was Harry Styles. If you haven't watched it, I absolutely recommend it because it showcases just how easily people will fall for a fake identity. The TikTok army of wannabe Sherlock's are so dedicated to their job of confirmation bias that they have found something absolutely terrifying. I have a question for y'all watching the video right now. Do you know what a door is? Like, like this thing, like, you know, right behind me. E even here, I got a door too. And I got like one over there as well. You know, like the large rectangular thing that you can open and close, you know, gives you a bit of privacy, that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, the Sherlock army on TikTok have found that the room that Bebop and Bebe film in has a door with a lock on it. Look, I may have a straight face right now, but trust me, when I first saw that TikTok, I couldn't help out but burst out laughing, which doesn't happen easily. Tell me, exp explain to me, please. How are you gonna be locked in when you can literally unlock the door yourself? Seriously, what kind of houses do these people on TikTok have that all of a sudden having a lock on a door means you're kidnapped? And the wannabe detectives get even dumber than this. Take a look. Bro, are you blind? Are you dumb? Or are you blum? What do you mean no doorknob? It's literally right there. Would it help if I, here, do you want me to, or how about? Nah, like for real, this is 
actually stupid. Now, I know this might surprise y'all, but having a lock on a door is a common thing. And even people with a large following like Anna Oop have been fueling this crazy theory by saying having a lock on a door is somehow evidence of a kidnapping. And on top of all of this, there are also latches and locks on the bedroom door, which isn't something that most kids have. Even just by looking at things on the surface, it's easy to see that something sketchy is going on behind the scenes. But if you actually look at the door without anything cover it, you can clearly see that it's not a bedroom door. It's a door that leads to what looks like a patio outside. I think many people don't realize that Beepop probably doesn't actually sleep in this room. Let's be real, who actually sleeps in a room that looks like this other than in Disney and Pixar movies? It's most likely a set. So, people have been searching for clues, looking for absolutely everything and anything that points to Beepop being kidnapped. There's one tip that caught a lot of people's attention, and I want y'all to take a look. Oh my god, no. No, it can't be. She's... She's holding a book. You know, I grew up loving mystery books. Okay, okay that, that's a lie because I didn't actually like reading much as a kid. I much prefer movies over books. But my point being is just because I like watching mystery movies does not mean a man is behind this camera forcing me to make this YouTube video that you're currently watching. But of course, if you read the comment section, people are freaking out saying it's a clue that Beep Bop is also a major unsolved crime. And then you got this comment here, the book and tape. Since it's supposed to be about brushing your teeth, it might actually be them not being able to speak up their mouth. Yo, okay, now that's actually some deep shit. Like if I saw that metaphor in a music video or a movie that I was watching, I would heavily fuck with it. But that's the thing, a movie or a music video. To be honest, at this point, Beepop and Baby are playing everyone. They've definitely seen all the crazy theories people are commenting and making videos about and are playing into it to get a reaction. And everyone is falling for it. And now we get to the topic of what has really fueled this conspiracy theory and it's got everyone worried for Beepop's safety. Many people believe that Beepop is actually a kidnapped child from several years ago. There's two missing children in particular that many people have or still do believe is Beepop from years ago. The first one being Aranza. According to the FBI's website, Aranza was taken from her mother at a mall in Vancouver, Washington in 2018, making her only four years old. Her mother was taken into custody in September 2019 in Mexico, but Aranza couldn't be found and to this day, it is believed that she is somewhere in Mexico. Now, there isn't really much detail to the case that points towards this being Beep Bop, other than the fact that for some reason people think this girl looks like Beep Bop, which I don't get how because first of all, this girl has blue eyes, but Beep Bop on the other hand has more like a brown or hazel eyes. And here's another picture, and like where? Like where do you see the resemblance? I found a video on TikTok that shows old pictures of Beep Bop from 2017 and 2018 on her mom's Facebook account, and I want y'all to take a look. Here is a picture of Beep Bop in 2017 with her brother Peyton. Here are some more pictures of Bebop before Aranda Ochoa Lopez's disappearance on October 25th, 2018. This picture of Bebop was uploaded two days before Aranda Ochoa Lopez went missing. Beepop was around the same age of that picture of Aranza and they look nothing alike. Speaking of not looking alike, here's a picture of the missing child's mother. Here's another one. And as you can see, she looks absolutely nothing like Bebe at all, but somehow people on TikTok are convinced that this is Bebe. What? Unless she pulled a Michael Jackson by making her skin white and changing her entire facial structure, this is not her. And finally, we're gonna be discussing the second child, which a lot of people are convinced is actually Beep Bop. Ava Baldwin. She was born in 2009 and went missing in 2015 after her mother Catherine Baldwin took her. So the two of them haven't been seen since 2015, but thanks to Take Dot, there's some new information coming forward that is now being investigated. You guessed it, people are now thinking that Beep Bop and Bebe are actually Ava and Catherine Baldwin. No, I'm not even gonna lie here, when I look at the pictures, Beep Bop, I mean, I can maybe kind of see a resemblance, not too much though. And the thing is, their ages don't really match up. Ava was born in 2009, making her 13 years old today, roughly in the eighth grade. But Beep Bop doesn't look 13 at all. At least to me, she looks like she could be 10 years old. And we've seen the photos of Beep Bop from 2017 where she looks like she could be maybe four or five years old. So the ages for Ava and Beep Bop just don't match up. But Bebe on the other hand, my God, I have to admit that looks a lot like her. Now it does not mean that this is her by any means. 
Doppelgangers are a thing. We know this. But seven years have passed since Ava and Catherine have been seen. And if Catherine did get some facial surgery, maybe gained or lost some weight. And also in her TikTok, she does look like she's wearing contacts. And it has been so worthy of attention that Ava Baldwin's father has actually been made aware of this and has been discussing this with a lot of people, a lot of people on TikTok. And it's been announced that apparently the authorities are investigating this new information. Even though Catherine and Bebe do disturbingly look quite a bit alike, I don't know, I, I feel like this is probably not her because it just doesn't make sense to me. Just think about it. You kidnap your daughter, change your entire identity and everything, and then years later, you are filming you with her on TikTok to go viral. Now you know with all these crazy theory videos that everyone's making, all these crazy theories that everyone's commenting, and you don't try to dismiss any of them, and you're playing into them, fueling the fire, it just doesn't make much sense. Or actually one could also argue that this is a genius move because she's making it seem so obvious that people might just look the other way because of it. But I wanna know what you guys think. Let me know, do you think Beepop and Bebe are kidnapped? I personally don't, but regardless of kidnapping or no kidnapping, there is no doubt that this child is being exploited and is in need of help regardless. Now, I wanna take you guys back a few years ago, back on YouTube, when people did more reaching than Reed Richards himself. When people were looking at Marina Joyce's videos and started you know, analyzing this a little way too much and genuinely thought that she was kidnapped. So it's, it's just like a similar thing here. People will see what they want to see. But anyway, guys, that's officially going to do it for this video. I hope by making this video, I can just, you know, get more attention out there, which is the dangers of parents exploiting their children. And also, in the case of this is a kidnapped child or any of that, I, I just wanted to use my platform, hopefully for some good. But anyways, that's officially going to do it for this video. If you did enjoy, please consider leaving a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. But until next time, it's been Ivan Steph. Peace.